This is my latest book, Locked in Time, Animal Behavior Unearthed in 50 Extraordinary Fossils. And this tells the stories of some incredible fossils that have direct evidence of behaviors preserved. Now, first of all, I should say thanks, Steve, because right. <laughs> you're selling this downstairs in the gift shop in the Etches Museum collection, so thank you very much. Now, obviously, I've been through your collections multiple times, and I know you have some really extraordinary specimens as well mm. that have direct evidence of behaviors. So I was thinking maybe, if you don't mind, show me a couple of the, oh, of the no. specimens, By maybe starting with this real beauty behind you. Oh, with the Etches, yeah. yeah. Well, that was found many, many years ago, but really what draws your attention in point of fact is actually its stomach contents. I mean, yeah. don't forget it's now crushed down, the stomach's extended fully, it's, yeah. but it's just full of fish. And some of the, 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 the vertebrae are articulated still, if you look carefully. Mm -hmm. We've got evidence of tentacles of these bellinothutids with the squid hooks inside oh, that, the oh, that's, that's preserved in, inside yeah, as well? Yeah, if, yeah you've oh, got to look really close. Right, see, yeah, so obviously when I've looked at this before, as you know, obviously ah. I've examined this specimen yeah. and only you can easily pick out all of the vertebrae there from the fish yeah. and lots yeah. of the, yeah. the ribs and other bones yeah. and, and there's plenty of scales as well, is there? Yeah, there's a scales? few scales yeah, yeah. and goodness knows what, but... but okay, I didn't yeah, know that. Oh, yeah, wow. there, there's wow. these bellinothutus hooks as mm. well and you can just see bits of the tentacle with them, so it's fragmented, yeah, really? you know, because it's... That's, but the other amazing. interesting thing again, you know, <laughs> which is exceptional amount of food in that sort of stomach cavity and beyond. Yeah, it looks but like that, it's about to explode. <laughs> but what's that hard lump? Yeah, I remember when we looked at this before. It's bizarre, that, isn't it? I wonder if it's a, a chunk of bone that it's, it's eaten from something, consumed it, and it, yeah. Possibly. Maybe that's what killed it. <laughs> well, hopefully, if we ever CAT scan it, we might get some yeah. thing on that. But again, yeah. of course, interestingly, we've got this tissue overlying the ribs. So that mm. really... And, and yeah, some of the soft tissues there. Yeah, well, it is, and you've got these... Yeah equidistant sort of linear lines that run parallel to each other across there. But yeah. again, with Chris Moore's, one of Chris Moore's soft parts preservation, yeah. Yeah. it shows the same feature. So it's well, not just anomaly on this yeah, thing. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's characteristic of a lot of other ichthyosaurs as well. Yeah, yeah well, see, that's one of the aspects then. So in, in Locked in Time, talking about predation, mm. and here clearly you've got the direct evidence that this ichthyosaur roughly, what, 157 million yeah. years ago, was feeding on, on squids, Indeed. on fish, and plenty of them. Yeah. It's, it's full. <laughs> and, yeah. and this is also, it's a juvenile, isn't it? It's, it's juvenile still, yeah, yeah. 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 But when you yeah. look at the teeth, a lot of them are already blunted. Interesting, so it, it's, yeah. it's, you yeah. know, that, that's quite interesting in its own right. It's, yeah. So it's a, probably an opportunist feeder, feeding yeah. on all sorts of you know, fish and squids yeah. and goodness knows what. And constantly, obviously, replacing the teeth as well. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, beautiful. It's one of my, my favorite specimens, naturally, you know, ichthyosaurs. I have the ichthyosaur t-shirt on again, just for Steve. <laughs> well, yeah. And yeah, no, that is a, is a beautiful specimen. But going, going from having the absolute direct evidence with, with stomach contents preserved, mm. I remember looking through some of these specimens before with you in the collections, but sort of these specimens here dotted around. And yep. firstly, you might think, well, it's a bit weird. Why have you got those dots there, these little holes mm. in, the, in the bones? Are they due to borings or something? But they're not, they're the predation. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, you've got a characteristic bite mark there, which mm. is triangular, yeah, yeah. and that replicates the tooth crown of a pliosaur idea, you know, really, oh. really well. Yeah, yeah, of course it does, yeah. So, you know, these teeth are trihedral, yeah. a lot of them. Yeah, so you can match them up. Yeah, really quite whereas well, yeah. that, you see, these are quite narrow, yeah. and we think that's a crocodile, but look at the power mm, of the bite, because yeah. that's cracked along yeah. there, that, that bite's gone quite deep. Um, and even, <laughs> even, you know, this is a remains of a much bigger ichthyosaur than yeah, any, yeah. anything we've got in the collection. But when we look at this, you've got the, the um, clavicles yeah, well, yeah. snapped off, yeah. you know? Yeah. And look, got, there's the part, the interclavicle there. Can you see? Still united, yeah, broken. Yeah. And then ribs that should be, you know, yay long, yeah. they're snapped off. Snapped off as but well. But the only thing is with this one, you can't definitively say what the predator was, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. Did you crocodile. find any bite marks on this one? Well, there is. Look, I, I mean, I've got a good imagination, Dean. But yeah, look, it's always a good thing. There's, there's a cut through there, and chips of bone yeah. there, still there. Bearing in mind it was capped with cartilage, so yeah, yeah. that's held there. And there's perhaps a groove there, but who yeah, knows? I don't know. I mean, yeah. it's pretty sort of. But there's nothing that's else. Quite possible though, because I mean, it's so disarticulated. The only piece mm. there is obviously the, the yeah, the forefoot, isn't slippery, it? Yeah, yeah. But, um, Interesting, but yeah, I can see what you, you were saying there with the teeth as well. So you've got the big teeth up here, the pliosaur yeah, teeth, yeah, yeah. and you've got that triangular shape at the yeah. top, right? And so yeah, that's matching these holes in the. Well, that one's beautiful bones. because that one is, that's if you've awesome. got really good eyes, the ridges oh, in wow. the tooth crown are actually impressed into that as well. Yeah, and if you yeah. turn it over the other side, you've got a corresponding groove where yeah. it's locked in both sides of the jaw, you know. 
Um, and again, you see, look, yeah, a line there. of three bike marks with these ridges that run down there. So, it, it's on. interesting. I was just, just thinking, is, is, it seems like there's a preference for limbs. Yeah, all limbs, yeah. yeah. Limbs yeah. and yeah. then pliosaur. So, have you found <laughs> any bite marks on, on anything else besides limbs? Or is it mostly, mostly limbs? And is it mostly pliosaur or plesiosaurs? Well, no, it, well, you say that, but look, <laughs> um, it's rife. Look at that centrum of an ichthyosaur. There's oh, yeah. a whole top and bottom where they've posed <laughs> oh, it. Because right? they just cracked it in half yeah, and it's just gone yeah, down yeah. the sea floor. Uh, evidence of, well, there's a ventral okay, rib, yeah, you yeah, see. Yeah, and yeah. look, there's new bone growth. Oh, wow, yes. Yeah, so obviously, it's that showing that yeah, it survived repair, the, the, yeah, the, the, the bite stuff. there. So again, that's that. so, so again, that's very different. So mm. we're going from stomach contents yep. to, to predation of these animals, obviously fi fighting and, yeah, and feeding. Whatever. Whereas with this, clearly yeah. it's been damaged, perhaps due to, to interaction or yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. And, and then it's showing that bone regrowth and yeah. that it survived. I, the best one though, Dean, is this. Yeah. It's not the most, because you're looking at the, actually the underside, the ventral surface yeah. of an ichthyosaur. Yeah. But when I found it, it was up the other way. Right. And we got right. a video of it, and it looks like it's ventrally preserved. So I thought, oh, great. When I turn it upside down, because we always turn right. the reptiles upside down, the best side is always preserved on the underside. Right, yeah. I came to this, and I thought, well, what's going What's going on? on? <laughs> Bearing in mind, you've got all the teeth both sides. Mm. But look at this. This is broken off here. This is broken here. What, in fragments of bone? I, you can really visualize that perhaps the ichthyosaur has been bitten off across at that angle and take the roof off. of the skull out. Yeah. And you see, it's not uncommon because there's, look, there's a mandible up there, another yeah. ichthyosaur. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been yeah. bitten off. You see there, up here? Yep. Up the top. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh sorry, yep, yep. Yeah, miss it, you know? And that dropped oh. like a dart down in the sort of sediment at well, 30 degrees. But then obviously thinking about that, the bigger Go picture on. there, you've got, that's where you're going to have an attack, right? The yeah. back, uh, back of the skull. So yeah. that would make sense. Interesting. But it's really, I mean, it's, it's really, I mean, and then we go on to, things like smaller stuff mm -hmm. like you've got a fish skull there you could it's quite subjective but right. the two little echinoids you could say they're feeding on the soft tissue the rotten tissue of that sort of oh, yeah, yeah. dead fish because yeah. it's semi you know the scales are gone it's probably yeah. just a amorphous mesh of, mess of sort of rotten fish so and yeah. of course you know yeah well, that's intriguing as well so it's a little bit more speculative because you've not yeah, exactly. got them feeding yeah. on it but then they were around that's, it. Yeah, but that's, they're around it, mm. so obviously already that's quite quite rare to find yeah. that association, so clearly something was, was yeah. happening with that. Possibly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then, of course, what goes out comes, and what goes in comes <laughs> out. Yeah. So we, yeah. and again, with reptile poo, yeah. well, think about birds. They don't sort of defecate with solid lumps. It comes yeah. out as one that's amorphous right, yeah. liquidy mass. Yeah, yeah. Well, you think of a pliosaur feeding on reptiles, yeah. that digests the bone as well. Yeah, So yeah, I guess... That would just come out as an amorphous mass of liquid. Yeah, possibly. yeah, which actually would be, go back to the ichthyosaur with that big lump of old bone in mm. there. Yeah, so it would have been digested and yeah, come yeah. out. Yeah, so because occasionally you do find uh, isolated teeth and some bones. I, I remember seeing a big coprolite from about, about this big mm. from Lyme Regis, so not too far away from me, where yeah. it had a little ichthyosaur coracoid in there. Yeah. Yeah, tiny coracoid at Oxford Museum, and then a tooth as well in there. Yeah. Of course, the tooth may have been from the ichthyosaur when it's bitten this little mm. one, swallowed mm. it, and, and swallowed it on yeah. its own teeth. But yeah, no, coprolites are always so fascinating because, again, they tell you a bit more about diet. So you, again, you go from predation to mm. stomach contents to, yeah, out the other end, yeah. and you've got the poop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, you know, some of them, yeah. these scales here, we, we oh, can identify yeah, yeah, those yeah. easiest coming yeah. from a, a Spiderinkus fish because they're very Amazing. distinctive. Yeah, you know. so you know exactly what... Uh, yeah, what, and then, oh. but coprolite, it says complete barnacle plates. Well, they're not actually etched oh. by any stomach acid, so maybe mm. they were actually cough back. I don't know. You know, there's a lot of... I mean, we know that's definitely mm. from a shark intestine. Yeah, yeah but that, that one, spiral intestinal what, bars, yeah. yeah. But what that one is, you know, you wouldn't walk on it if it's on the footpath. But yeah. And some of these things, we got coprolites with fish jaws in, with the teeth still. And yeah. small, how in the heck do they pass those? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty here, prickly. Yeah. Partially digested fish. Yeah. Incredible. How, how, how do you go about prepping some of that material? Air abrasive. Oh, easy, abrasive yeah, well, dead for, easy. For it's really, yeah. really nice, yeah. yeah. It's quite soft. Yeah, it preps it, up lovely. It does, yeah. 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 Oh, amazing. Well, take a look at a couple more, because this mm, one in particular on. is really, really interesting. I remember looking at this before with you briefly, but I'll let you obviously explain finding this. It's such an, a, a cool thing. Well, the, the, the start really is these body chambers, these yeah. actually lithified, in other words, the sediment's gone in and preserved the body chamber because it's, 
it's the, the, the sediment's got in, infilled that, but the fragment yeah. cone is, you know, the, full of air chambers yeah. and yeah. that's just crushed down flat. And yeah, yeah. I only collected these because of the worm tube. So uh, again, oh, yes. in a muddy substrate, yeah. these colonized a hard substrate to live yeah. on that. Yeah. And it was just going along one day, there was a broken bit of ammonite. I could see something just a little bit shiny. So I prepped it down and I thought, hang on, I recognize that. That's actually, you know, carapace of the side of a lobster, you know. Mm. So I thought, that's strange. It's right in the back of the body chamber. So honestly, there's no kid. I broke another one open. It's got the same thing, <laughs> right in the same place. And I thought, ah, well, it must be. These are molted. So yeah. it's living inside the ammonite. Of course, what does yeah, it do yeah. when it has to grow? It, it goes right to the darkest, deepest area, you know, back of the body chamber where it's safest. Yeah. And does it there because they're vulnerable until their new shell hardens. So yeah, yeah, very it's not going to change the world with the evidence but it's it's an interesting observation it is again it is it's direct evidence that these animals back during the jurassic they do the same behavior then that they they've yeah. done done through yeah. through time and, and still do and today. still do today yeah again, yeah which yeah. is which is great you know it is to, but to have that's the thing that's why it's so th these types of fossils fascinate me so much because you do have that that's direct evidence you have of it there so it's an empty mm -hmm. chamber of this this ammonite they've crawled inside yep shed the old exoskeleton yep. waited around till that's hardened so it's safe yeah. and then come back out yeah. I, I, incredible and it tells such a cool story yeah it does it's, yeah it's, yeah no i love that side of it it's not yeah. just the fossil itself yeah. it's what it tells you no no massively yeah. well let's finish then with the my one of my favorite <laughs> specimens in the entire yeah. museum i must say steve is the the ammonite eggs so that is for me one of the yeah by far the most most spectacular well spectacular specimens. yeah i know but from the a non-academic point of view, the stories were that, that yeah. that was the first find after finding the dragonfly wing and finding those two sections there with actually under a microscope, look mm. egg light, and of course, what in the hell were they? There's right. no reference yeah. book to tell you. Yeah, well, there's no other, well, there's no ammonite eggs have been, ever been found before. No, right? no, there's no. A, there's potential with the, But the to get a clue on that, I had to yeah. look through modern sort of marine organisms, yeah. came across cuttlefish eggs. And the shape, right. these yeah. are two mil, but cuttlefish eggs are about 10 or 12 mil. Right. But it's the shape, they were so distinctively the same. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, well, if they're not cuttlefish eggs, what other <laughs> separate pot have we got? And then, of course, ammonites. And of course, yeah, yeah. To, you know, you've got to prove that to people. And yeah. of course, I couldn't. Yeah. So yeah. I, the hunt was, I found more. Yep. But in the end, I found over that predated ichthyosaur, there's a partial body chamber. Yep. I just buzzing it down with an air pen. I put the pen straight through a sack of eggs, just in association with it. And I thought, blimey, there's now an association. But of course, rather like that ammonite body chamber, and yeah. you could live inside that dead ammonite and lay yeah. its eggs. So how are you going to prove that? So right, right, it was okay. then finding this one, this is an Alica <laughs> stephanus, yep. with a much larger sack of eggs. And from that, we could actually, through an academic friend of mine, we took an egg off, cracked it in half, used a scan electron microscope, yep. and then um, that really got quite exciting. We didn't see any, any embryo inside right, it, right. but of course, they're not yet fully developed, possibly. We don't yeah, know yeah, yeah, of how they laid those, whether yeah, they were developed inside. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, so on that basis, I thought, well, I, I really need to describe this because I think I'm pretty sure that's what they are. Yeah. And so we got another academic friend, John Callaman, who's a, oh, yeah. Yeah. He's now he's sadly dead, but he came on board and said, look, before I put my name to this, you've got to prove to me they're ammonite eggs. So I'm a good con man. <laughs> so he came on to actually disprove he, he went through the whole scenario what else could they be yeah, yeah and then he yeah. came to the conclusion he thought that they were definitely ammonite eggs now we found more since then mm -hmm. but the story's not finished we've looked okay. on some with a scan uh, with a cat scan and then we've not, not found any embryos yet but we think we get to prove it but we found it, we may think eggs from another different horizon from the lias yeah. and from the corallian that have also got eggs. So, there. yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what else you... Well, the thing is, it. though, Dean, as you know, yeah. you, you've been down the beach and you get crushed yeah. ammonites. How many people then yeah. pick away the shell to see if there's anything in right. it? We've never done that's, it. That's, that's and, of true, course, yeah. that was water-worn to show yeah. those. So yeah. if we were to say, right, we've got a month, we'll bring six students down yeah. and we'll spend a month looking, I guarantee we find loads more. It wouldn't surprise me, plus probably some more lobsters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 with that shadow of a doubt. Yeah. Hopefully, if I get another... Uh, <laughs> Another follow-up book to Locked in Time will include these. Good life, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, th thanks so much, uh, no, Steve, right. for showing me these. I really appreciate it, mate. We can go take a look at some more well, stuff. Well, no, thanks for coming down. <laughs> yeah, no, my, my pleasure.